Do you have something to say? Probably nothing worthwhile. Neither do I, but I do it anyway. Yeah, it happens. It usually does. gets me in trouble. Well, but see, if you say something on my show, it gets me in trouble. Valid point. Game on. But I edit, so <sighs> I can beep you out. Can I pick the music? You could, but it doesn't mean I'm going to use it. Where do I fit into this? I'm not sure. I was asking you. I was hoping you would have an answer. Because hmm. it is your shop, after all. Good point. I got nothing. All right. Well, I'm going to go out and take a picture of your son. <laughs> <laughs> good friend Scott Armstrong's garage, known as Armstrong Automotive. Hello and welcome to another episode of Eric the Car Guy. I'm Eric the Car Guy. We're at Scott's garage like I said earlier. And today we're going to talk about changing your own oil in your car. Now there's a few things, a few safety precautions you want to consider when you do this. One is that you don't drop a car on your head because that would probably hurt. Do we have jack stands? Yeah, I have jack stands. I have jack stands that I'm going to use to hold this car up when we get it there. You can use ramps. I've seen people use curves, but I don't necessarily recommend that. Basically what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to need to get the front of the car up, and you're gonna to need to get the hood open, so that's where we're gonna get started. First thing you wanna do is open your hood. Next, you come out, open the hood. It's usually a good idea to have the engine warmed up before you do this, because especially if it's really cold outside, the oil might have a hard time coming out of the pan, so. If you run the engine for a good 10 minutes or so before you start this, things under there are going to be kind of toasty, but the oil will run out a lot faster and you won't have to sit there forever waiting for this glob of stuff. Well, I just drove this, so I'm not going to run it at all. Next, we're going to have to jack the car up. I'm going to use this floor jack, and there are a couple of little hooks underneath the front of the car, which I'll show you in a second, that you can actually jack the car up from to get a jack under the lift points on the side. On this one, the hooks are kind of hidden. They're actually up here underneath this shield, but you can jack the front of the car up by these. Next, it's time to put the jack stand under. Now, before you actually put yourself underneath a large heavy metal object, you got it on the jack stand, just shake it a little bit. You don't need to try to push it off the jack stand. Just make sure that this thing is secure because this is a lot of weight. And gravity takes over, and it's, your head gets squished. Yeah, life would suck. And I don't want you blaming me for that. Now, when you're ready to get under the car and actually start work, you can use what's called a creeper, which is basically a really low to the ground kind of skateboard thing that you can lay on. Or, uh, actually, I like to use just an old piece of cardboard. And the reason is, if you're laying on a creeper and you're trying to break something loose, sometimes the wheels move you out of the way. And in addition to that, it raises you up off the ground considerably. So you're able to get in and under there a lot better and have a lot better leverage if you're just laying on a piece of cardboard. So that's what I use. And recycling is good. Okay, this next part, you have to get up under the car and find the drain plug on the oil pan. Now it's important to find the one on the oil pan and not something else. And it's important to know that you're actually going to let the oil out of the car and uh, not some other fluid that might be vital to something else. On these cars it's nice because these aluminum pans usually have it cast right into the outside of it and it says oil on the outside of it. If you're not sure, consult the owner's manual. The next thing we need to find is the oil filter. Now on this car, it's sticking out the side over here. It's usually some kind of big cylindrical object screwed to the outside of the engine. When you find it, you may need, uh, you may not be able to get it off by hand. You may have to actually get a uh, special tool, an oil filter wrench, in order to get this off the car. They put these in all different kinds of places. They may be easy to get to, like this one is, and they may be a lot more difficult to get to. It really just depends on what type of car you have. You need to also change this when you change the oil. These are some different types of oil, wrench, oil filter wrenches. This one is a strap type, probably the most common that's out there. This is a type that actually goes onto the back side of the oil filter itself and fits into 
uh, a 3 8 drive ratchet and this will also spin off an oil filter sometimes in tight spaces. Here's another style that actually um, is adjustable and the more you turn it the more it grips down on something kind of like a pipe wrench. Also this is driven by a 3 8 ratchet and there are other types besides this. There's some that look like giant pliers um, and different things but these are some of the things that you may have to use in order to get the oil, the oil filter off. Now that we know where all the stuff is to get the oil out, we're gonna need to have something to put the oil in. Now, I've got one of these tubs that I bought at a local big box store. And it seems to work pretty well, and I like it because it has this uh, upper part, upper portion here, that allows the oil to go down into the pan but it doesn't allow it to slosh out. So as you're moving this around, it's it doesn't go spilling out everywhere. But there are any number of things you can use to catch the oil in. I don't recommend just letting it drip out on your driveway or the parking lot of your apartment complex. Uh, I'm sure that you would probably hear bad things about that. So uh, I didn't tell you to do that. I told you to put it in something. Okay, next what we're gonna do, we'll knock the drain plug loose and you want to turn it in a counterclockwise direction. Tightening it will be clockwise, loosening it will be counterclockwise. So you want to turn want to turn the bolt in a counterclockwise direction. Shouldn't take too much. Next, take your pan, put it underneath where the oil is going to come out. I usually take out this little plastic plug on the end, that way air can escape without it bubbling out everywhere. But then you can just unscrew the plug let the oil out. Just gonna let that drain for a while. Next, while this is draining, I'm going to take the oil filter loose. Now, I did the oil change last time, and I know that I'm just gonna be able to twist this, and it's gonna come loose. Some oil may come draining out at the same time. Just let it go ahead and drain. It's important to uh, not tighten these filters so tight that you can't do this, but if you need a wrench, you need a wrench. Now that the filter is pretty much drained out, you can take it the rest of the way off. And I just turn it up, turn it upside down in the pan and let it drain out. Before you install the new filter, you wanna take a little bit of oil on your finger and then put it on the outside of the rubber gasket on the oil filter itself before you screw it up onto the car. That will uh, make it so that the filter screws on a lot easier. But something I just thought of, one thing you want to make sure of is when you take the old filter off, you see this metal surface here? That surface should be metal. It sh you shouldn't have any rubber there. In other words, what I have seen is sometimes this rubber gasket, when you take the filter off, will stay stuck up onto the car. If that happens and you screw a new filter onto it, the minute you start up the car, you're gonna have a great big mess. So be sure that this up here is free of rubber stuff. Something else I'd like to note here, not all oil filters are this metal canister type. Um, some oil filters are actually just the paper portion of the filter and mounted in some strange locations. The thing that comes to mind is like a Hyundai V6. The oil filter is actually on top of the engine. Some Mercedes are like that and some other vehicles. They don't have what would traditionally be referred to as a metal canister type of oil filter. You may have to look around for the lo its location. The best thing to do is consult with your owner's manual and find out where the filter location is. Uh, so that you can replace it, but I assure you, uh, every engine I've ever come across does have an oil filter. However, its location varies greatly between makes and models, so uh, if you can't find the oil filter and, and where to get it off the car, just consult your owner's manual and see if that can give you an idea of where to look. Okay, now that we have lubricated our new oil filter and the gasket around the outside and see that there's no rubber or gasket material left on the engine itself, I'm going to go ahead and screw this oil filter on. Now I'm going to spin it down until it just touches the metal. Then I'm going to turn it three quarters of a turn. That should be all you have to do. 
Uh, you check it for leaks whenever when you're done, but as far as w when you put the oil filter on, that should be all you have to do is about three quarters of a turn. You turn it any more than that, and you're going to have difficulty getting it off next time. So really, you're just hoping to compress the gasket, and that will seal the oil filter. That's all you should have to do. Normally, when you put your drain bolt back on, you'll notice that there's a little metal washer underneath here. And I've used mine a couple of times. But that little metal washer goes in between the bolt and the outside of the oil pan. It really should be replaced whenever you do this. Uh, so um, unfortunately, I don't have a new one. But whenever you, whenever you take the drain bolt out, it's a really good idea to replace this. I don't like the plastic ones. And some of these metal ones get squished on here so badly that they don't even resemble metal washers anymore. But I'm just going to reuse this one this time because I know I replaced it last time and I don't have one right now. But just go ahead and screw the drain bolt back down. And you take your wrench and just snug it up. You don't have to do it so much that you'll never get it off again and the washer underneath goes everywhere. So just, just tighten it down enough to where it's snug and then I wipe it off with a rag. You also want to, if you can, clean the area where the oil uh, came out of the filter. Sometimes the oil will drip down on the exhaust and you want to try to avoid that because It'll, it'll smell and uh, possibly create some smoke that comes under, uh, from under your car and that's never a confidence builder so just, just uh, try to clean up after yourself uh, when you do this particularly be careful around uh, any of the exhaust. Now that my oil is all drained out and I've changed my oil filter and I've cleaned everything up under there I'm gonna pull the pan out from underneath the car. Now that the pan is out from underneath there, you've changed the oil, or, or you've got the old oil out of the car, and you've installed the new filter, you can go ahead and let the car back down now. Go ahead and remove your jack stand. And you can let the car down. Now you need to get oil back into the engine. But you say to yourself, well, what kind of oil should I use in my engine? Because on many vehicles, I'll tell you, right on the oil cap. And in this case, this says 5W30. So when in doubt, just look at the oil cap or a lot of, sometimes on top of the air cleaner. Another place to look is in the owner's manual. It should be a section that looks something like this. Sometimes different, different vehicles take a different type of oil in different climates. Uh, as you can see, they've got the ambient temperature along the bottom here that coincides with uh, the type of oil to use. Sometimes you'll see multiple different types of oil within these temperature ranges. So if you live in a colder part of the world or a warmer part of the world, you may be using a different oil. But in this particular case, they're saying to use this 5W30 all the way across. Now we could get into a long drawn out discussion on what brand of oil and what type of oil to use, synthetic, non-synthetic. I'm gonna say, go with your gut. Uh, cars that have got a few miles on them uh, engine parts are kind of worn out. They make specific blends of oil for high mileage cars. Um, I'm not saying don't use those. I'm saying if you want to spend the extra money to use them. Uh, what I'm going to say is that as long as you're changing it within the manufacturer's specifications with the type of oil that they say to use, you're okay. What you're looking for is this guy right here. And that's the API service donut as it's called. And this tells you not only what the grade of the oil is, but it also tells you that it is certified by API, which is the American Petroleum Institute. And as long as, as long as the oil that you're buying, I don't care if it's generic or you know, some high dollar oil or synthetic oil, every oil has this sticker on it somewhere and that it is certified by the American Petroleum Institute. If you buy some oil and you don't see that mark on there, I would worry about that oil. Once again, the key here is to do this on a regular basis. Uh, the type of oil you use may or may not have an adverse effect on the inside of your engine. That's an argument I am not even going to touch here. Change your oil on a regular basis, 
Look for the API service donut on the back of the oil. The brand or type of oil, synthetic, non-synthetic, completely up to you. All right, now this is kind of a tricky little bend here, so I'm gonna use a funnel. Oh, capacity. In your owner's manual, aside from what type of oil to use, it will also tell you there, there, there should be a, uh, a section on capacities, and the capacity of this particular engine is 4.7 quarts. I'm gonna dump five in. To be absolutely sure, Refer to your owner's manual and find out how much oil is supposed to go into the engine. Also very important. And this jug that I have here that I'm pouring in, five quarts. Okay, once you're done, screw the oil cap back on. Very important. If you don't get this back on, oil could be everywhere. Almost forgot, when you're done doing your oil change and you've got the oil back in the car, the next step would be to start the car, run it for a couple minutes, shut it off, look underneath, see if there's any leaks from anything that you did, and then check the oil level uh, after you've run the car. That way the oil filter's filled up and it's all through the system, that kind of thing. That way you're, you're sure that you don't have any leaks and that the oil is at the proper level. So after you're done changing the oil, recheck it and make sure that uh, the correct amount of oil is in the car. Now when you change your oil, see it as an, as an opportunity to look your car over. Uh, look underneath for any leaks or uh, anything that looks out of the ordinary. Anything that doesn't look, I'm not going to say clean because the underside of your car is quite dirty. But if you see, particularly, particularly look for oil leaks around the engine itself, uh, coolant leaks, transmission fluid leaks, just Keep an eye out and look around underneath your car to see if there might be something that needs to be addressed. And the other thing that uh, you should do when you change your oil is not only change the oil, but check the rest of the fluids and see what kind of shape they're in as well, such as the coolant, the power steering fluid, the windshield washer fluid, top that off, and also check your transmission fluid to see if that is in good order. I'm going to do a separate video on checking fluids and topping them off but this, this just covers the oil change. Uh, in addition to checking the fluids and checking the car over, something else that is a real good idea is also to check the tire pressures. Now, uh, the next video that I'm doing is actually gonna be on tires, so you can refer to that. Lastly, something that I forgot to talk about in this video, which was, what do you do with the old oil? What I do with the old oil is recycle it. Uh, there are a number of different ways you can go about this. Uh, some of auto parts stores have the ability to take on the used oil from the oil change. Different shops may take the oil. As far as I know, you shouldn't be charged for recycling your used oil. and You just want to make sure that you take care of our, our planet here. I realize that oil is basically dead plants and dinosaurs and such. But you really don't want to spread it around and especially put it into the ground, that kind of thing. Very good idea. Recycle your oil. Be responsible. Don't dump it all over the ground or definitely don't dump it down a storm drain or something like that. Take care of the planet. Be good. Thank you for joining me for this video on oil changes. I hope this information was helpful to you. As always, you can post comments uh, here below this video or video responses if you so desire. Or you can visit me at ericthecarguy.com. Uh, one last thing to mention, thank you very much to all my new subscribers. Welcome aboard. We we'll look forward to the next episode of Eric the Car Guy. Thanks. See you. Ah, this is going to be fun. You might just learn something. <laughs>